Hey there internets and welcome to my review of Power Grid by Rio Grande Games. Now unsurprisingly, being from Friedman Freeze, it's in a green box. But what is it actually? Well, looking at the cover, it's pretty clear it's about power plants and power plants from like the 1920s maybe by the looks of this image. Um, so yeah, it is about power plants. It is a Euro game about resource management, about bidding and about controlling cities by powering them. So how do you do all this? Well, you'll first have a phase of bidding where you get power plants using the money that you've got. Then once you've done that, you get to buy resources using the money you've got, which are these lovely things here. And these will be in the market. Once you've done that, you're then able to purchase connections to cities. So this is where you place one of these little building things to show you are able to power that city if you can produce enough power with your plant. The way you'll produce power with your power station is to spend resources as required by the type of power station. So this one here, you'd use oil, you'd use coal, coal or oil. There are some that you don't need any power for. There are some that use garbage. There are some that use nuclear power. Once you've done this, you then gain money. So depending on the number of cities you're able to power depends on the amount of money you get. Then you repeat the process with the money that you've just gained. And you keep doing this until a certain number of buildings have been placed by a single player. And this varies depending on the player number, at which point it's the end of the game. And whoever can power the most cities wins the game. So this isn't whoever has the most cities out on the board. And cities out on the board is what ends the game. It's who can power them. So it's possible for the person who ended the game to not be the person who wins the game. So what do I think of Power Grid then? Well, we'll start with the artwork. And the box is kind of representative of the artwork, to be honest. A bit drab, a drip, bit boring, and very Euro. And you look at the board and you see the same sort of style artwork, really. Nothing exciting going on there. The power plants are, again, the same sort of style artwork. Just, yeah, visually, this game is not impressive. But where it is impressive is the components. Well, most of the components. The board is good, thick cardboard. The wooden components are lovely, finely crafted, beautifully painted. And the cards are, well, they're okay, to be honest. What kind of draws down the components is this horrible, horrible paper money. I mean, if you even played Monopoly, Monopoly has better money than this. Come on, we expect better. And that's why, of all the components in this game, this is the one component I'm like, yeah, that needs changing if they're going to do another print. But frankly, they haven't yet, and it doesn't affect the sales. And there's a reason for that. It's the gameplay. The gameplay in this game is phenomenal. I mean, I'm not a big Euro gamer, I will admit that. But I love this. It is your kind of midweight Euro. It's not a gateway game. It's not something for people who want a light, easy game. This game is going to take you a couple of hours to play. But it's just so fantastic. I mean, I tend not to like bidding in games. Or I often haven't liked bidding in games. But the bidding in this really doesn't put me off. It just seems to work. And I think part of it is that it's not aggressive bidding. It just kind of you go round, you go round, and you might just lose out on a building, but you've made someone pay, uh, well, sorry, a power plant, but you've made someone pay more to get that. And then you just get the next power plant that comes along. And because of the way the markets work for these power plants, it means that you tend to then end up with a better one anyway. And you have less competition because someone else won the previous one. So it really doesn't harm you that much to not win a bid. It's only if you're really desperately after a certain type of power plant that you're going to be really paying over the odds for anything in this. And so I find that works really well. The fact that you have the way the power plants come out being controlled. This was the first game that I've seen that in and it works really well. What happens is the power plants are numbered. Now, they will be randomly sorted, but as they come out, 
they get put into number order. What this means is, yes, you're not always going to have the same number coming out all the time every game, so it does have randomness for replay value there. But what it means is that the randomness is leveled somewhat. So you don't have a, you start the game and this amazing power plant comes out and whoever buys that ends up winning the game. Because that won't be in the row that you can buy. Only those cheaper ones are. And the fact that they thought about, well, how do we stop that just getting clogged up? They have them removed. As the game progresses and the number of cities out goes over certain numbers, the power plants of those numbers get removed, which means that the game is always developing, always getting higher and better. And that works fantastically well. It means that the early game is the early game. The mid game is the mid game. It controls that very well and in a way that feels natural rather than feeling forced. Another way it does this is with the steps. So this game has three steps. You start in stage one type thing, step one and you're only able to be in one of these cities. Then, when you reach a certain criteria, I can't remember exactly which way around it is, um, I think stage 3 happens when it comes out in here, stage 2 happens when you hit a certain number of buildings, so it's possible to skip stage 2 and jump straight to stage 3, but it is unlikely. And as you go up in the stages, when you hit stage 2, you're able to have two people a city so it means that the control aspect of the board suddenly you're able to go places again but you just have to pay a bit more but it's fine because you're in the mid game you've got more money you can afford to do that and then the same thing happens again when you hit that third stage and you're able to put a third building in so it works really well there is an element of interaction going on in this map that's really good and better than a lot of euros because of you being able to block people off and make them take routes that are going to cost them more or just make them spend more to jump over you means that there is interaction there of when you're choosing where to go it's not just your own personal game on your own you know it's not that solo experience you are thinking about what other people are doing paying attention to where other people are going and that's really good now what else is so good about this game mechanically is the market system. What happens is the more people buy these, the more expensive they get, which just perfectly mirrors the real life situation of supply and demand. The more supply there is, the cheaper things are. The higher the demand, the less supply there is, and the more expensive things get. And this game does that so much better than any other game out there. So, what else is there to say? Well. Can it play two players? Yes, the game actually scales really nicely. And the reason for that is the fact that the board is broken down into these segments. And they thought about when people are playing with different numbers, that you just remove some of these segments. And that means that you still have that same level of interaction going on in the board. Because proportionally, you're playing in the same size board, which is fantastic. I will say that as you go up in player numbers, the market does get a bit harsher. They have actually considered this and balanced it somewhat though, because the amount that you put into the market each round is actually adjusted based on the player numbers. So they have considered this, they have thought about it and made it less impactful than it could be, but it is still noticeable at least between the top range and the bottom range. So yeah, perfectly happy and great fun to play this in any of the player numbers. It can go a bit long in the higher player numbers. That's just one thing to be aware of. So in summary, I think Power Grid is a fantastic, phenomenal game. It's by a fantastic designer and it very much warrants being so renowned and so loved by so many people. And that's from someone who isn't a big fan of Euros, but if you're going to get a Euro that's a mid-weight Euro, this is definitely one to try, if not just get. It is fantastic mechanics. It's not complicated, it can be a bit fiddly with controlling the markets and putting stuff out each round. But what it gives you is just this phenomenal experience of actually building up your market, that building up your power, deciding where you go, that ends up being different every game. So there's a huge amount of replay value.
And that's what I think about Power Grid by Rio Grande Games. I do hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course if you have, do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.